Hey, welcome back to um, Have Roots Will Travel. My name is Lisa Elvin Staltari, and we are currently knee deep in a series called Searching for Canada Through the Census. This is episode four, and we're going to be looking at the 1881 census and finding out where Canada really is kind of coming into its own. So we want to explore that a little bit more and um, can't wait to share the information on 1881. So with that being said, let's get started and explore this census. Now we're coming up to the 1881 census. So this would be the only the second one uh, since Canada was a country. Let's have a look at the details. Decade that was preceding the 1881 census. Well, we have 1871 where British Columbia joins Canada. We have 1870 the Great Chicago Fire. We have 1873 Prince Edward Island joins the Confederation now. 1873 Northwest Mounted Police are formed. In 1874 Alexander Mackenzie becomes Prime Minister. And then in 1874, Alexander Graham Bell, a Canadian, makes the first phone call. 1878, Thomas Edison patents the phonograph. And in 1880, James Garfield is elected president. Now, think about Alexander Graham Bell and Thomas Edison. These are monumental, um, you know, inventions that were to change the world. And we saw that in the preceding um, years before the 1881 census. So now we have the 1881 census form. Here are some facts. It was taken April 4th, 1881, and Canada's population was now 4.3 million. So the first selection of questions has to do with residents and personal descriptions. Column one, numbered in the order of visitation, vessels, remember those ships. And then we have column two, shanties. Column three, we have houses under construction. We have column four, houses uninhabited. And then finally, um, co column five, houses inhabited. Column six, families. The family names are number seven. We have column eight, the sex, F or M. Column nine, age at last birthday. And column 10, born within the last 12 months. So the questions about nativity are the same as the previous census. We have column 11, country or province of birth. Column 12 is religion. And column 13 is origin. Profession, occupation, employment, the same. Column 14 is the same as previous. So the education and marital status is a little bit different because there's only a couple questions. Column 15, are you married or widowed? Column 16, instruction, are you going to school? Infirmities, same questions. Column 17, deaf and dumb. Column 18, are you blind? And 19 is now called of unsound mind. So you can see the little, you know, changes that are going on in the society for calling, um, you know, calling people of unsound. They're not calling them idiots and insane anymore. They're calling it unsound mind. My two times great grandmother Adeline. Well, guess what? A new fellow comes into play. It is my um, great grandfather, Clement Andrews, who was born in 1875. He is now six years old, and he is now part of the um, sequence that I'm going to be looking at because Clement is very important to the story of my family. So we have Adeline and Clement, and then the rest of the family all together in um, the 1881 census. Now, something very interesting is going on in the 1881 census for my two-times great-grandmother, Emily Gilmet. Now, here's a thing you must know if you're doing French-Canadian research. Oftentimes, they will not list them as their married name. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. So you have to be on the lookout. And in this example, Emily is now back to being her maiden name. She Above her is her husband, and he is called Onazem. Uh, even though in the previous one he was called Joseph, so that's also part of the thing. But she is now going by Gilme Emily. In most, um, in most census, like even 1851, 61, 71, you will see, uh, and into 81, you will see the females, the the married women, 
are known by their Mary by their maiden names. So if you're looking, for example, for a boulanger and you can't find it, the Please, please look for the maiden name of your uh, great grandmother. And in fact, this may be a way for you to find that out. But that is how it's listed. It was just a very matriarchal uh, focus that they had. They wanted to, um, and that's how they were known as well. They, uh, you know, they they really held on to that maiden name. It's not like in the English societies. They really, really um, wanted to make sure to be remembered. So much for joining me on episode four of Searching for Canada Through the Census. Um, I wanted to leave you with a few resources before we, before we proceed. We have Counting Canada, a genealogical guide to the Canadian census. We have Ancestry.com and Ancestry.ca for you to look for your people. We also have the website called My Heritage. We have the website called Family Search. These are big, big websites. All of Three Genealogy is a smaller one, but very focused on Canadian research. And of course, we have the Government of Canada Library and Archives. I've posted the links for all of that, also for the Counting Canada book, if you wanted to order it. Uh, I have the information there for you as well. So I will see you on, on episode five as we explore the 1891 census. See you then.